When a series of earthquakes rattles the seafloor off the Oregon coast, why does the scientific community pay such close attention? Could swarms of tremors barely felt on shore be early markers of stress building deep in the Cascadia subduction zone? And if the offshore plates are shifting, what unseen forces might already be transferring inland toward the volcanic heart of the Cascade Range? The ground beneath these snow-capped peaks has always been restless, but recent signals suggest the system may no longer be as quiet as it appears. For centuries, the Cascade Range, with its imposing volcanoes, has stood like a fortress above the Pacific Northwest. Mount Hood rises in Oregon. Mount St. Helens in Washington is remembered for its catastrophic eruption in 1980. Mount Rainier towers with its heavy glaciers, while others, such as Mount Jefferson, the Three Sisters, and the volcanic basin of Crater Lake, add to the chain's presence. They are not only scenic wonders, but reminders that this region is part of the volatile Pacific Ring of Fire, where tectonic plates collide, dive and grind against one another, fueling some of the most destructive natural events known to humankind. The recent swarm of earthquakes was not beneath the mountains themselves, but far offshore, roughly 100 miles or 160 kilometers west of the Oregon shoreline, along the restless Juan de Fuca plate. This small but powerful tectonic plate is steadily diving beneath North America, a process known as subduction, and it is this descent that fuels the Cascade volcanoes. The earthquakes, most registering between magnitudes 3 and 5, were not powerful enough to cause alarm inland. Yet their clustering, their depth, and their persistence drew the attention of seismologists who know that in this region, swarms are not meaningless background noise. Unlike a single quake with aftershocks, a swarm is defined by multiple tremors striking close in time and space without a clear main event. Often these sequences end quietly, but sometimes they act as early warnings of pressure shifts deeper within the earth. Offshore Oregon, where the Juan de Fuca plate bends and cracks as it pushes beneath the continent, swarms can mark the slow transfer of stress, a process invisible to daily life but deeply tied to both earthquake and volcanic risk. Mount St. Helens provided a grim lesson in 1980 when an earthquake swarm in March signaled that magma was rising. Within weeks, the north face of the volcano swelled outward, and in May, the catastrophic eruption reshaped the mountain. Not every swarm leads to an eruption, but history shows that they often precede important geologic changes. This is why the offshore activity now has experts paying attention. The Cascade Range has erupted many times in the recent past. Mount Hood was active in the 1800s. The Three Sisters region of central Oregon has experienced uplift, suggesting magma movement beneath the surface. Mount Rainier's history includes deadly lahars, mud flows that buried valleys beneath tens of meters of debris. Crater Lake itself is the remnant of Mount Mazama, which collapsed in an eruption roughly 8,000 years ago, one of the largest eruptions on Earth in human history. Each mountain in the chain carries a record of violence. None can be considered extinct. This is why swarms offshore are more than a curiosity. They occur on the same plate boundary that has fueled these volcanoes for millennia. The Juan de Fuca plate is like a conveyor belt, sliding beneath North America at only a few centimetres per year. But over centuries, that motion accumulates immense stress. When the plate jerks, stalls or fractures, the effects ripple through the entire system. Offshore swarms may be releasing stress harmlessly, or they may be the first stirrings of something larger 
as pressure transfers toward the locked Cascadia subduction zone or the magma systems beneath the mountains. The Cascadia subduction zone, stretching more than 700 miles or roughly 1,100 kilometers from Northern California to British Columbia, is capable of generating a magnitude 9 megaquake and tsunami. Geological evidence shows that such events have happened many times in the past, most recently in the year 1601. Offshore swarms, though smaller, connect to this larger story because they reveal that the plate boundary is in motion. A boundary in motion can be benign, or it can be a prelude. Early analysis of the recent swarm indicated that several quakes occurred deeper than 20 kilometers, or about 12 miles, below the seafloor. Deep events like these matter because they track the descent of the slab into the mantle, where rocks begin to melt and magma is born. If tremors cluster there, it may mean fluids and melts are moving, altering the stress field. While no single quake in the sequence suggested imminent disaster, the pattern reinforced the reality that Cascadia is alive, dynamic and unpredictable. Onshore, life carried on as usual. Residents of coastal towns felt little, if anything. Inland cities bustled with their daily routines. The mountains themselves stood serene, drawing hikers, climbers and tourists. Yet in scientific offices, seismologists passed charts and debated possibilities. Was the swarm routine, or was it a small signal of a deeper change. The quiet above ground was in stark contrast to the restless movements below. This tension, the surface calm versus the subterranean stirrings, captures the essence of the cascades. They appear timeless, immovable, but their very existence is proof of ongoing geological upheaval. Each volcano holds reservoirs of magma beneath its slopes. These reservoirs are linked, however indirectly, to the same subduction forces that created the offshore swarm. When pressure shifts offshore, the possibility exists, however remote, that reservoirs inland could be affected. In most cases, they remain undisturbed. In rare cases, the chain reaction begins. History has shown that volcanoes rarely provide long warnings. Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines erupted in 1991 after only a few months of activity. Kilauea in Hawaii, though often more predictable, has surprised observers with sudden fissures and lava flows following earthquake swarms. Mount St. Helens gave just weeks of signs before its catastrophic eruption. Offshore Oregon, the story is murkier. No one can say with certainty whether these swarms will fade quietly or ripple into something greater. Adding to the mystery is a phenomenon discovered only two decades ago, episodic tremor and slip. Roughly every 14 months, sections of the Cascadia subduction zone silently slip by a few centimetres, producing faint tremors too weak to be felt but measurable on instruments. These slow earthquakes may release stress or, paradoxically, may add stress to the locked sections of the fault, bringing them closer to failure. Some scientists now wonder whether offshore swarms could be linked to these silent slips, part of a larger rhythm in the subduction process. For those who live in the shadow of the Cascades, there is little visible change. The volcanoes remain majestic, the forests lush, the rivers flowing. But beneath this beauty lies an uncertain future. The swarms offshore are a reminder that the earth here is never fully still. The subduction zone, the volcanoes and the seafloor are all connected pieces of one machine. When one piece shifts, the others feel it. The question that lingers is not whether Cascadia will awaken, but when and in what form. 
Will the next event be a quake offshore, a volcanic eruption inland, or the long-dreaded megaquake along the subduction zone? The answers lie hidden for now, locked in the tremors that most never feel, recorded only as lines on a seismograph. Yet those lines may be the first faint signals of a system preparing to remind the world that the Cascades are not monuments carved in stone, but living giants bound to the restless heart of the earth. The silence of the Cascades is deceptive. Each year that passes without a major eruption or catastrophic quake is sometimes mistaken for proof of stability. But in geology, silence is not peace. It is only the interval between events. The recent offshore earthquake swarms are one of the many signals that the system is still alive, and understanding what they mean requires examining how stress, magma and history intertwine beneath this landscape. The Cascadia subduction zone is one of the most enigmatic and dangerous plate boundaries in the world. Unlike California's San Andreas Fault, which slips often in moderate quakes, Cascadia is largely locked, building pressure for centuries. The offshore swarms recorded in recent months were not large enough to release this immense stress, but they confirm that the tectonic engine continues to grind. In some cases, such offshore swarms precede adjustments along the plate that ripple inland. The challenge is that these connections are complex and not easily predictable. Seismologists have long debated whether swarms like these can trigger volcanic unrest. In principle, any shift in the crust that alters stress fields could affect magma reservoirs. The key factor is location. If tremors occur near regions where magma already sits at critical pressure, even a slight change can open pathways for movement. Offshore Oregon, where the plate bends before diving under the continent, such tremors could alter how fluids and melts migrate upward. The connection is indirect, but not impossible. The greatest challenge in communicating this reality is balance. Too often, warnings of megaquakes or eruptions are met with fear or dismissal. People want certainty. Is danger imminent or not? Science, however, deals in probabilities. The offshore swarm may fade into obscurity, forgotten in a few months. Or it may mark the beginning of a larger sequence that ends with either a great quake or volcanic awakening. The truth is that no one can say with precision. This uncertainty is itself the most unsettling fact. The Cascades are not merely mountains, they are vents for a subduction engine that spans the ocean floor. When tremors occur offshore, they are not isolated. They are connected to the entire tectonic story of the Pacific Northwest. If the machine is stirring, every part of it, the volcanoes, the coast, the inland valleys, is part of the stage. The mystery lies in not knowing which piece will move next. To appreciate the stakes, consider the scenario of a Cascadia megaquake. Coastal towns would be inundated by tsunamis within minutes. Bridges, highways and power lines across Oregon and Washington could fail. Cities like Portland, Seattle and Vancouver would endure prolonged shaking. Millions would be displaced, billions in damages would follow, and the aftershocks would continue for months. This is the nightmare that lurks behind the quiet swarms offshore. The possibility is not abstract. It is supported by centuries of geologic evidence. Alternatively, consider the awakening of a major cascade volcano. Mount Rainier could unleash lahars that sweep down valleys, threatening communities far downstream. Mount Hood could erupt and disrupt life across Oregon. Even a smaller eruption, like that of Mount St. Helens in 2008, would blanket regions with ash, disrupt air travel, and force evacuations. 
The fact that offshore swarms can link indirectly to volcanic unrest means that every tremor is a data point in a larger puzzle, one that scientists are racing to solve. And yet, in the midst of these sobering possibilities, there is also resilience. Advances in seismology, GPS monitoring and hazard planning are giving scientists unprecedented tools to track these changes. Networks of sensors now cover the cascades and the offshore margin, capturing data in real time. Public awareness campaigns are preparing communities for earthquake drills and emergency planning. The more we learn from swarms like these, the better prepared society can be. The challenge is ensuring that preparation keeps pace with risk. The real revelation of the offshore swarms is not that disaster is imminent, but that the system is undeniably alive. The cascades, the subduction zone and the offshore plates form a single restless machine. Every tremor is proof that the machine is moving. The question is not whether it will break again, but when and how. This truth transforms the swarms from curiosities into warnings, subtle signals reminding us that the Pacific Northwest lives with one of the most profound natural hazards on Earth. And so the mystery resolves not with certainty, but with recognition. The cascades are awakening, not in the sense of roaring to life tomorrow, but in the sense that the system is stirring, sending messages through the tremors offshore. Whether the next chapter will be written in ash, in tsunami waves, or in quiet shifts that pass unnoticed, no one can say. But the earth beneath Oregon and Washington is speaking, and it would be unwise not to listen. The story of Cascadia is still unfolding, written not in years, but in centuries. Offshore swarms are the punctuation marks of this story, reminders that the narrative has not ended. The Cascades are alive, the subduction zone is locked and loaded, and the Pacific Ocean continues to push relentlessly beneath the continent. This is not a matter of speculation, but of history repeating itself. The only uncertainty is the timing of the next great awakening. For those watching, the lesson is not fear, but vigilance. Earthquakes and eruptions will come, whether in years or in decades. The choice humanity has is whether to be prepared, to learn from the whispers before they become roars to treat the beauty of the Cascades not as timeless monuments, but as guardians of a deeper, restless force. If you found this investigation valuable, take a moment to like, share and subscribe, and tap that hype icon to help this story reach more people. The more voices hear the signals, the better chance we all have to prepare before the Cascades remind us, in their own way, that they are never truly asleep.